Hello everybody. If you watched my earlier video, you saw I temporarily diagnosed a failing draft inducer and how I got it running on an emergency but temporary basis. I've decided to replace the bearing. Listen to what a bad bearing sounds like in this ECM motor. Draft inducer is running right now. So I've turned the furnace off. That's what a noisy draft inducer motor sounds like that has a failing ball bearing. I don't know if you're able to hear that or not, but if you watched my earlier video, you could see I pointed out that you could separate the front and back half of the inducer housing by removing six screws. I'm just pointing one of them here, but there's one here. There's one down here. There's one at the bottom. One near the top here, one out over here, and then one down in here. You can remove those six bolts to separate uh, this housing from this side of the housing. But again, you have to replace this RTV silicone seal. I've decided to re remove the whole draft inducer, and to do that, you'll have to remove uh, the clamp here for the exhaust gas and then there are three screws that hold the inducer to the furnace there's one here there's one up in back here and, and there's one uh, one or two down here behind the uh, pressure differential switch I would highly recommend that you take pictures with your phone or your tablet take lots of pictures so you can see how the wiring is routed and how these uh, hoses are routed and go from there so remove the whole inducer assembly and then uh, replace the bearing. Here's a backside view of the inducer housing and you can see the four mounting legs. See two of them right here, these two, and then those two down there. So that's what the back looks like that you can't see. And this is the seal right here coming up to the furnace itself that has a little bit of um, black high temperature RTV on it. So if you break the back half away from the furnace you have both the seal to redo with RTV and uh, this seal right here that should be redone. So I have the pressure differential switch out of the way here. Here are the four bolts that hold the inducer to the furnace. There's one up here and they're all they're pretty long. Not to be confused with the short bolt holding the front half to the back half of the housing. Another one down here, I've got it loosened so you get an idea of how long these are. As I said, there's one more right down in here, and there's another one here. This is going to be tight, getting this uh, exhaust line off of the inducers. It's going to resist coming out easily. So you can see here, I've got the motor completely out of the inducer. It's very straightforward, so I'm not going to waste any video on how to do that. It's totally obvious. What's not obvious now is how to get to this ball bearing right here. This bracket houses the bearing, but the screws come at it from the other side, come at it from this side. So the screws go in this way and pick up this bearing bracket, and the ball bearing is located inside here. So this cover needs to be removed and I think what's going to happen is when I get in the back of this, this back cover will not, is not going to come off easily without unsoldering the control board to the electrical connections. So we'll see what that looks like in a moment. So the first step is to get this cover off right here. I've uh, no tools required. You just you see this you'll see, you see, just pinch these latches together. There are four of them. You just pinch those together and this cover will come out, exposing the electronics. And so I suppose the next thing I need to do is remove these two screws and see whether this cover comes off. After you remove those two screws, the cover doesn't come off immediately. It's held by these two little plastic tabs you see right here. 
And then on the other end, there are two retaining tabs, which is registered on the circuit board, one down there and one down there. And then you have to clear this connector plug right here at the same time. So this has got to get pried out this direction to the left. And then this looks like it has to be pried out this direction and then the cover will slip off. You don't want to put any uh, tools up against this. This is the winding for the motor. And if you damage this winding due to pressing on it or something, you're going to be toast. So you can see I've got the two tabs released. And I'm going to try to clear this connector. Let's see whether this will come out. There we go. So it's out. So let me see what's going on here. Oh boy. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the screw. There's a screw here. There's probably, and there's one on the other side right here. There's a better view of you. You can see it really well right here. This screw right here, and there's one on the other side, run through the motor stator lamination and pick up this bearing bracket, which is going to have to be removed in order to replace the bearing. And it appears that there are at least, it looks like there's one electrical connection here and another electrical connection here. So one here, one here. Both of those are going to have to be unsoldered. Yeah, it looks like those two connections and then these two screws and this circuit board with a little bit of luck will completely move, lift off and move away. Oops, we have a cooling fan to deal with here yet too. So that'll, that'll be a little tricky trying to get that fan off without breaking it. I'm not looking forward to that. Well, getting this fan off is a little bit challenging. I will point out to you that there actually is a push-on fastener here. So it pushes onto the shaft and it's sort of designed to go one way. So prying it back off is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to try to twist it off first to see if I can't sort of thread it off, but uh, I'll draw your attention to this metal fastener which, which prevents this fan from walking off the shaft. Let me point out that there are five solder joints that need to be undone in three locations. Location one, two, and three. And then there are two joints here two joints here and one joint here for a total of five. So here's the fastener you see on the end of my pick tool that needs to come off so you can remove the fan. I just twisted it off. I grabbed it with a pair of pliers, grabbed the other end of the shaft with my hand and just twisted this uh, push-on fastener off the shaft. And I'm guessing that the fan will come right off. Well, yeah, the fan will come right off. And so now all I need to do is uh, should be able to clean up that solder joint right there and I'll be able to pull this board off and then I'll be able to replace the bearing. You can see here I've got the board off. Now it's just going to be a matter of removing these two screws and this bracket will come off and I can pull the bearing. I'm not really sure how I'm going to press it back on yet, but we'll deal with it when we get there. Take the screws off that hold that bearing bracket. So there's the bearing bracket. You can see a lot of rust inside there. So there's clearly water has been getting into that. And 
let's just take a close look at this bearing here. So it looks like it's a shielded bearing. That's a metal shield there. I'm going to replace it with a sealed bearing. You can see here it's got a rubber seal. It should help keep the water out of it. Uh, the seal is going to, the seal, if it is a contact seal, is going to require a little bit more motor starting torque, but that should keep the water out of it. Well, keep some of the water out of it. So I'll get my bearing puller. Those of you who don't have a bearing puller, I don't have one either, but ran down to a uh, friendly auto parts store. They'll loan you a jaw puller for 45 days for free. Just put down a deposit, bring the tool back with your receipt, and get your money back. I got the ball bearing off, so let me show you how I did it. I basically clamped the bearing in my vise. You notice I have this rag underneath and I also have a cloth on the floor and that's just padding to catch this whole assembly after you get it free from the bearing. You don't want this falling on the floor damaging the shaft. Uh, I would recommend that you hit the end of the shaft with a metal punch. You don't want to hammer directly onto that shaft for fear of bending it. So by applying pressure as close as you can to the center of the shaft and striking it firmly, that should minimize any chance of uh, bending the shaft. But as I clamp the bearing in my vise, I clamped it really, really tight. And when I smacked the end of the shaft down, I was able to move the bearing and the outer race actually cracked into two pieces. You can see here I've got, this is half of the outer race, the other half of the outer race is sitting inside the the vise. So I've got uh, the bearing apart. The bearing did move about a quarter of an inch and I'm pretty sure that I can either clamp onto the balls of the, uh, the what, what's left of the bearing, clamp onto it with the vise and very gently tap down on it with uh, my metal punch at the top It'll fall into here. This is where it fell, and if this doesn't catch it, it'll fall into the to the padding I have down on the floor. So that's how I got my bearing off. Well, I got the bearing off, and here's my new bearing. It is way too loose. The inner diameter of this cheap Chinese bearing is uh, not what I want. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put a couple of uh, knurls on the shaft with my metal chisel. I'm just going to go in and knurl the shaft a little bit. And since the shaft material is softer than the inner race of this bearing, when I press this bearing on, those knurls will deform. And the bearing should be... That's what's centered, but you don't want that inner race rotating. Uh, you also don't want the outer race rotating if possible, and that's why I put a little bit of bearing grease inside here to put a little friction on the outer race of that bearing. I will draw your attention to this little washer right here. When you pull the old bearing off, you're going to need to put this washer back on. I don't know if you can see that there. It keeps the uh, it keeps this face of the bearing from rubbing up against uh, right in here. So make sure you got that little washer there on the shaft before you put your new bearing on and uh, you'll be good. Well, I'm pretty sure these won't show up but I have some little in, little indentations I put on the shaft right where the bearing is supposed to sit. You see a slot there and there and then I'll use some uh, Loctite some high strength Loctite Clean that shaft up really good. Put a little Loctite down there, and hopefully that will lock that inner race of the bearing. Well, before I put the circuit board back on, I thought I'd show you uh, the other two things I did. One was I packed this bearing cavity here full of grease. 
that way uh, hoping that that will help keep the water out of it and then the last thing I did is I put this little silicone o-ring here you can see the green one and what I'm hoping here is that if any water is traveling down this shaft when it gets to here it'll fling the water away and keep the water from getting down in that bearing as I said I've got more than 10 years somewhere between 10 and 16 years on this draft inducer so get another couple more years out of it that'll be great so anyway I won't show you the rest of throwing it together again make sure you use some RTV silicone to seal up the two halves of the inducer the reason you need to do that is because when this is sitting in the down position there's a lot of moisture and water in here and if you don't have this sealed up properly it's going to leak uh, there's water that runs down through this hole right here and runs into the condensate trap and so this seal down here has got to be really good or you're going to have water dripping into your furnace and onto the floor. I think if I had to do it over again, I would spend a little more money than a couple of dollars for a ball bearing. I might spend a little extra for uh, maybe a USA made bearing as opposed to a Chinese bearing. And maybe the fit would have been a little bit better. Got everything back together again, so let's fire it up. I don't really want to run it too long because I don't want to produce uh, moisture just yet because my RTV is still wet. But let's see what the new bearing sounds like. Oh, that's pretty quiet. Much quieter than it was, so there you go. If uh, this helped you, please help me with a subscription. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your troubleshooting and repairs.